I hope you guys are enjoying the process of me creating this piece just as much as I had fun making it myself. Because let me tell you, it was quite a ride. This was a very emotional piece. I had my ups, I had my downs. I questioned my whole life. I'm sure at this point, some of you have questions. Maybe questions about the process, maybe questions about why I would do this to myself, or just general questions about the materials I use, or personal questions like my favorite Pokemon. So strap in, cause here we go. When creating something like this, my main concern is arranging each character on the page and how big that character is going to be. I looked up different sizes of paper and I decided that a 16 by 20 would be the best because an 18 by 24 is obnoxiously big and 11 by 14 was just going to be a little too small for each character. On a 16 by 20 inch piece of paper, each character was going to be just over an inch and a quarter which sounds really small, but it wasn't that hard to work with. Once I had decided on the size of paper I was going to use, I got on my computer and started to grid out the piece of paper and arrange how I would put 151 squares on this piece. After this digital grid was made, I put the name of each Pokemon into it just to make sure that I did not forget any of them as I started to draw them onto the paper. This just made it easy to keep track of which one I was on and that they didn't get messed up in case I skipped one. This is also nice to do because you can get your friend to look at it and make sure you didn't miss any at all. Because that would be a disaster. Once the digital layout was finalized, I went to my piece of paper and started to grid it out in pencil. This part's pretty easy because it's just a matter of measuring and marking. Unless you're me and you donk it up and have to do a huge portion of it over. Womp womp. Then it was on to the fun part. When sketching the Pokemon, I focused on the details of what they look like and not so much the details of the positions and poses I wanted to have them in because I just wanted to make sure that I got everything out of my memory as soon as I could and that I wasn't going to forget any details. That was my main concern. As long as I had their details down, I could always go back and draw them in a different position if I didn't like it. And just for your information, no, I didn't look at the Pokemon before I started this project. It just kind of came to me one day, and I don't even know the last time I looked at these Pokemon because I kind of dropped off the Pokemon Go phase a little while ago, and I haven't been playing any Pokemon games lately. So the only Pokemon that I'd seen were just random pictures that I'd seen on the internet and Twitter. So no catching up for me. Once all of the Pokemon were generally sketched down, I moved on to transferring them to watercolor paper. I just do this by redrawing them. I don't have a light box, I just redraw them the best I can. And if there was a Pokemon in a position I didn't like, I worked a little bit on sketching it a little bit better before I transferred it. This phase, drawing them, actually took the longest out of watercoloring, inking, sketching, everything. because. I had to do a lot of redrawing. I had to make sure that I had them exactly the way I wanted them. Then there was a part where I had squeezed all the Pokemon so tight that I had way too much room on the end of the line and had to redraw completely the whole line of Pokemon and oof, that took a while. After I had them all drawn out into the paper, it was time to ink them. This is probably my most favorite part because things start to look much more solid and it's one of the easier parts because, well, you're just tracing them. Unfortunately for me, my pins started to run out midway through because, well, I used a lot of ink and I ended up having to order more pins, waiting on those, and that delayed me a few days. Once everything was inked, it was time to watercolor. I think this is probably one of the harder parts when remembering the Pokemon for me than the actual drawing them. I can draw the general shape and details of a Pokemon, but when it comes to like the color of their fur or the patterns on their skin, I just lose it. So this was the more difficult part for me because I don't know where that patch of light color fur is. I don't know which Pokemon have a white stomach and which don't. That really gets me. That's probably the most common mistake for me is leaving out the patch of stomach that's supposed to be white in all of these guys. 
Once they were all watercolored, I put on a few final ink details and I was done. You'll see later, but I couldn't get the pencil off of the paper. I don't know if it's because I let it sit around for weeks without erasing the pencil, but you can really see the grid on it. And I thought I drew them lightly, but I guess I didn't do it light enough. Oh well. So, now that you know the process of this piece, let's talk about why I even drew it to begin with. I have two words for you. Art block. Back in April, I made a video talking about how I hadn't been creating anything, and I didn't want to call it art block, but I said I was in a funk. I had recently moved to Canada from America, and after Zelda came out, I had trouble getting myself to work on anything other than play video games. So the stress of moving plus wanting to play a video game had me in this stall for art. And I hated it. I really did. And my one solution to art block has always been draw Pokemon. The good news is that I think it worked. I started this piece on April 17th and I didn't finish it until June 3rd, but honestly, I only worked on it for a few days total. The reason why it took me a month and a half to finish it is because it cured my art block and I wanted to work on original pieces. I didn't want to work on this Pokemon drawing anymore. But I had to push myself to finish it because it had been sitting in the corner of my room for so long and that really bothered me. Pokemon is something I go to with my art block all the time. This is actually not the first time I have drawn all of the Pokemon to get out of art block. I did this many, many years ago. I actually drew five generations of Pokemon in just two days. They're very simple drawings and I did them very quickly, but it's just something that gets me to draw and gets me out of my funk. I wouldn't even call myself a huge Pokemon fan. I've actually been falling out of it recently. And to be honest, I haven't even beat Pokemon Moon. But when I'm stuck and I can't get myself to draw and I don't know what to draw, Pokemon are just a very fun and easy, cute, low pressure thing to draw. And they're a variety of creatures and it's just something that I like to do when I'm in a funk and I can't draw. I would suggest it to you. Also, doing it from memory just adds even more fun to it. It's a challenge, but it's not a pressure challenge. It's a fun challenge where you can laugh at yourself. This reminds me of the video I made a few months ago where you choose six random Pokemon and you draw them from memory. I still switched Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. I'm never going to get those two right, I swear. So let's answer a few questions before this video is done. How long did this take me? It took about three hours to sketch, maybe 10 hours of drawing and redrawing them onto the watercolor paper, four hours to ink, and maybe eight hours of painting. This is all just a guesstimate, honestly, I have no idea. Am I going to draw the other generations from memory? I actually have started working on the second generation on my live stream, but I don't think I'm going to do any after that because I do not know the other Pokemon well enough to do this at all. I'll read a name, and I'll just end up inventing something. It's gonna be bad. Plus, I'm not huge on drawing fan art because I just really want to create my own things. What size is this? 16 inches by 20 inches. And what's your favorite Pokemon? My favorite Pokemon of all time is Ampharos, but as far as the first gen goes, I guess Gengar. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed watching the process of me working on this huge project. And I hope you'll join me for future live streams where I'm working on the second generation. Also, let me know in the comments, did I do an alright job drawing all the Pokemon from memory? Or if you think you could do better, go ahead and try and I'd love to see what you guys can do. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!